I will beat this f thing with a f***ing stick. It's working. Can you see that? It's actually working. Finally working. Now what it does, when it balances, discharges or whatever, it'll switch to uh, first it goes to that side and then it'll go to that side then it'll go to that side and that side while it's while it's discharging that side it reads the voltage on that side and it does the same like that so that's the balance done <laughs> it's just just that much you know I've got the rest of it to do oh at least it works it don't set on fire well, not as bad as it used to. I'm, I'm part of the way there now. Well, I am well on my way. <laughs> I've had to add a temp temporary, f ow, temporary fan. Literally just to cool the MOSFETs down when it starts getting hot. I've run out of pins on the teen seat. Uh, I think I may be able to get a PWM pin so as I can control the temperature and fire when that comes on or, or not. These don't get too hot. I don't know if you can see, hang on. Lovely, flashy lights. So when it's not doing anything, that's what it does. It just sits there monitoring. Now if I plug all these batteries in again, I have to keep my ribbon in place for quick release. You can see the, uh, the voltage, you might not be able to see it, I don't know. I've got a bigger screen coming, I can't I can't work with this because it's just not big enough, there's not enough, uh, I can't get enough detail on there. So you can see all the voltages, that's fluctuating by a millivolt, that's the closest I can I'll possibly get, get, fuck. That's fluctuating by a millivolt which is the closest I can get it, I can't get any more stable than that. It's, it's just the nature of the beast, it's just not going to work. I can't put external ADCs in there, like 16-bit ADCs, because it just... I'm adding complexities, and I've already been down that route. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. It's fine. I've put smoothing capacitors on there, which wasn't easy to mount on top or piggyback on the back of a bloody resistor, I'll tell you. It's now in uh, balance mode. So what it does is it goes through all these, and it checks to see if all the cells are inserted correctly it has to have a fully populated working bank of cells for it to work properly so there's the voltage and you can see that what well, that one says on number 13 why did I have to unplug number 13 it says no battery uh, the status is check and it says there's 15 cells inserted so when I put this one in although you're not going to be able to see it very well it then I've still got to change this. Uh, the target is 3.883 volts. This is the current that it's drawing, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's drawing between uh, 10 and 12 amps per cell. Now, this is the reason why I had a bit of a problem. Oh, it's done. No, it isn't. You can just see the cells. Well, you probably can't actually. The ones that are light on are the ones that are being balanced or being, the, 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 the voltage is being dragged down. What it does, it will balance, it will discharge whatever needs to discharge on that side. Then it takes a voltage reading so it gets the current drop. These are uh, 0.3 ohm resistor banks. So it calculates how much current's being drawn from that. Then it goes to that side then it does another voltage reading for that, that bank of cells then it stops um, and it takes oh it's finished then it stops and it takes a voltage reading of, of the cells unloaded and then that's it so it works the only thing I've got to incorporate is number one timing accurate timing uh, because it's just on a loop uh, just a delay, a basic delay that's all so I've got to incorporate that and I've also got to incorporate the voltage reference but this is a TNC 4.1 which hasn't actually got an internal reference it has but it's complex it doesn't work the same as normal ones so I've got to I've, I've got an external reference coming so it's coming on and then I can start putting this on 
That's going to be interesting because it's going to go there and the screen originally was intended to go there but it's going to be bigger so I may have to put another another row, another layer on there just for the screen. This is the longest project I've ever worked on but it's working. Not properly but it's working. I ain't got fire. That's a good thing. I'll start fitting this um, which is going to go there. I think. And also I've moved some of the pins over so I've got a couple of free pins. As you can see on here, um, the ones in red are the voltage reading ones and the ones in black are the f to fire the MOSFETs. The TX, is it pin 1? TX is actually used for the LED strip so that's been used. Those are for the LCD or the OLED at the minute, it's going to be the LCD tomorrow hopefully, if it turns up. And those two there, which I can use for PWM, I can use to control fans. So, that's it. And I've got no others. I've got, oh yeah, I've got a voltage reference coming as well, which is going to be either one of those. And then, literally, there are no pins left apart from a ground and pin 13 which is going to be used for the uh, the um, LCD oh I've got an RX <laughs> that's it <laughs> literally that's it I've just noticed I need another pin the, oh you can't see it hang on this FET here is for turning the charge circuit on now I'm a bit worried about this because if I put two FETs in parallel you get uh, capacitance and I don't know how fast the switching is and I don't I, I don't know what to do yet that will handle 20 amp constant and this is going to pump out more than 20 amps so anyway I've had to use I might do two in parallel I don't know yet I've had to use pin zero because that's the only pin I've got left <laughs> anyway I've got some sacrificial wire here. I always use sacrificial wire whenever I wire anything up for the first time. Always use sacrificial wire because if anything goes up in smoke, that will. So I've got one wire going to ground off this FET here, one going to ground, one going to pin zero, which is set to an output. I've done a test script so nothing else works. This battery, just cell number one, is connected to the charge circuit on this one here so what should happen is when the LED comes on which you can see it coming on well you might be able to here yeah, you can when I plug this power supply in which is a 5 volt 20 5 volt 50 amp power supply <laughs> when I plug this in here these should all come on but that one should be in charge state and I can't remember what colour LEDs that they are I want to video this because if it goes up in smoke, at least I've got some evidence. Oh, I ain't plugged the battery in. Well, now they come on. Oh my god, it's working. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that's worked, first time. I am making very good progress. It's been bloody slow, but I'm making very good progress now. Right, the principle of operation is, what it's going to do is not necessarily capacity, t capacity test the batteries, which are all there, it's actually going to make sure that the batteries are actually matched it's all right having a uh, if you've got if I've got two batteries hang on if I've got two batteries and they're both apparently 3000 milliampere hours but in actual fact that one is 2500 and that one's 3000 when you're discharging them what happens with the charger is it'll bring them both down to the same voltage and most of them, 99% of them, don't actually report the capacity of the battery. The capacity to me is totally irrelevant if the batteries aren't matched. 
So if I was to plug that one in and it was drawing, uh, I, I don't know, at, at, at about 10 amps, that one was going down to about 2.5 volts and that one was going down to 2.6 volts, they're not matched batteries. This is what I'm trying to do, is get perfectly matched cells. The tattoo lipos that I was using in version 2, they were actually matched uh, lipo cells and the power difference is unreal because they both, they all, all the cells drop at exactly the same rate. So I'm not really com concerned about capacity at the minute. I want to make sure that all of my cells are completely matched both charging and discharging and this is what this is going to do. What we've got on, a, on screen, we've got a monitor charge, discharge balance, storage capacity, calibrate and a holder. The holder thing does nothing. So if I go onto the monitor, literally all it does is it gives you the voltage of all the cells which as you can see are all exactly the same. They're not because this goes down to millivolts but it only displays in um, tens of millivolts. So you've got the minimum and maximum voltage, so you can see there's a difference of zero. So if I select balance, they will start flashing because they're not 100% perfect. It gives you here the millivolts difference, the minimum and maximum voltage. That there is, that line there is the voltage at which the, the cells drop when they're under load. I don't know what help that's going to be at the minute, but I'll put it there because I can. So immediately, can you see, we've got three cells that, uh, no, three cells that are stronger than the rest, very slightly stronger. That'll help me by, it's this voltage sag thing, if that one's identical to that one, the same milliamps, but when you put a 10 amp load on it, that one drops like a bloody stone, that means that somewhere you can have a, a problem in the long run. Discharge. I think that's set at 3.94, yeah, 3.94 volts it's set to just for testing purposes obviously. So what it'll do now is because the amount of current that this thing was draining, it was 160 amps in total. I can't get wiring thick enough to make it portable so Basically I've had to split it into two halves, it'll do that side and then it'll do that side. And you'll notice I've got two fans, I've got one, this controls the, which isn't plugged in yet, that's the charge circuit. And that one is the discharge circuit, so I had to put one on the FETs because they were getting, they weren't getting burning hot but they were getting over 100 degrees C. So I had to do that. So when these, these all get down to 3.94 volts, it'll stop. But at the moment it's bringing them all down to 3.94 volts which is what I don't want. What I do want is when the first one hits 3.94 volts it cuts out. The storage doesn't do anything. The capacity test is going to be the big one with the load of programming that I need to get done. Uh, the calibrate is literally, that's the ADC after the voltage dividers which are here, that's the ADC voltage that it's actually reading so what you do is you quite literally it's, it's very simple uh, you pull, plug your negative probe off your, your your multimeter onto the negative rail and then one by one you go through and you probe the voltage of the battery and then a simple division or multiple was it division a simple division and then you input into the um, the coding and that's it calibrated so it's easy to calibrate them it does take time because there's 16 cells and it's using the internal ADC um, voltage reference on the TNC 4.1 the voltage reference is actually 3.3 volts so what it does is it outputs 3.3 volts on the 3.3 volt pin and on this one I've got three, uh, 2. Uh, 3.298 volts or something like that which you input into the sketch and it automatically calculates the voltage. Right, when I plug this wire in here nothing should happen which it doesn't until I select charge. Now it fires those up this isn't finished yet, it's nowhere near finished 
it fires those up and off it goes. Now I've noticed with these TP4056 whatever they are the, the voltage difference is quite big some, in some of them so I may have to take the ICs off and change them with another one to change the, sense, the, the, the voltage sense off from other TP watts it's until I get relatively even. Uh, some of them are at 4.25 volts, some of them are at 3.98 volts, what one of them was which I had to take out. So I've got those to do. Now this screen does come off. Uh, the battery's there just to prop it up so you don't get the glare off the lights like that. So if I need to, I can actually get underneath. So it's all modular, or, or sort of modular anyway. And that just goes on there, but as you can see, you've got loads of glare. So it's, it's, it's coming on very slowly, but it's coming on. I've just got a hell of a lot of programming to do now. That's the tough part. Hey-ho, we're getting there. <laughs> 